If you've successfully made the jump to Blender 2.8, you may have noticed that not all of your favorite add-ons have been ported to the new version. Since we're all starting fresh, now's a great time to check out some new ones. This is a list of the top 10 based on an extremely scientific Twitter survey, a lot of forum digging, and my own personal experience using them. I'm Jonathan Lampau with cgcookie.com, and whether you're a beginner or a pro, I guarantee that there are going to be some new ones here for you that are going to make your life a lot easier. Number 10, Pivot Transform. This is one of those nice little things that seems like it should have just been part of Blender all along, but it's a completely new add-on for Blender 2.8. It's tucked neatly away into the pivot point popover, and when you turn it on, it allows you to move the origin around without moving the object itself. What's even cooler is that you can use snapping. Remember a couple courses ago when I did this manually by going into edit mode, and it took about a minute to get the origin in the right spot? Yep, well, this could have made that take about five seconds. What's also great is that moving your object origin this way won't mess up the location of any child objects, which is otherwise a massive headache. Rotations are a different story though, because that's a whole lot more complicated. It also happens to zero out your location data, so do tread carefully if you've already animated your objects. Number nine, Bygen. If you liked the generative modeling lessons with Midge, you're going to really enjoy this generative modeling add-on by Curtis Holt. Besides sounding like a line from Forrest Gump, it allows you to quickly apply cool styles to your mesh so that you can model things very quickly and end up with a really neat geometric modern look. It's creating displacement textures and adding a whole bunch of modifiers for you, so it's nothing that you couldn't do already. It just saves you some time if you use these kind of styles often. To be completely honest, I didn't go into this add-on expecting a whole lot, but after giving it a try and using the hard surface skin style specifically, I just had a ton of fun modeling a bunch of random things and having it look cool, and it really helped get the creative juices flowing and get me out of a bit of a rut. So for the whopping price tag of $1, it's definitely worth a shot. Number eight, loop tools. Back before Blender had so many great mesh modeling tools built in, loop tools was one of the only ways to get some important modeling stuff done. Now it's not as much of an essential, but operators like making any number of edges into a circle, making sloppy loops into a perfect curve, flattening things at strange angles, things like that come in handy all the time. It's included in Blender, so take 10 seconds, check it on, and save those preferences if you haven't already. Number seven, Mira Tools. This add-on has been around since 2015, but I actually hadn't heard of it at all until Jerry Perkins, the creator of HardOps, aka Master Xeon 1001, mentioned it on our live stream. He said that, it was one of his favorite tools, but unfortunately it was no longer being developed. Well, that's changed because it's back in 2.8 with a bunch of new features. Mira Tools is a set of retopology and mesh deforming operators that can be pretty darn helpful. Frankly, I'd end up using Mesh Machine or Retopo Flow instead of Mira Tools for the retopology and bevel stuff, but the curve deform and curve stretch operators are pretty unique and super fun to use. For the few occasions where it doesn't quite work out how I want, Another add-on, Bezier Mesh Shaper, nicely fills in the gaps. So if you're looking for a way to quickly reshape high-density meshes, I'd really recommend grabbing both of them. Number six, Speed Sculpt. If you're less about the mesh modeling thing and more about making characters and creatures out of digital clay with a little bit more artistic freedom, then this add-on is worth checking out. Speed Sculpt helps you quickly block out characters, manage dynamic topology, Boolean using curves that you can just draw right on the mesh, simplify areas, manage masks, and all kinds of cool things. It helps you stay focused on sculpting without getting bogged down by all the technical stuff. If you want to compare this to a related add-on, Sculpt Toolkit, check out the video that Kent made about it last year. If you find yourself sculpting often, it's definitely worth grabbing one or the other. Number five is Edge Flow. This really popular 3ds Max and Maya tool has finally made its way over to Blender. Edgeflow uses spline interpolation to adjust edge loops to fit the surrounding geometry. This is really cool because you can use it to quickly clean up messy topology or better blend between two areas. Its two operators, setflow and setlinear, come in handy pretty often and they're conveniently added to the edges context menu. It's free, simple, and adds features that just didn't exist in Blender before, so I'll definitely be using it pretty often if I can remember that it's there. Number four is Box Cutter. If you like to make things with Booleans, Box Cutter is going to be your new best friend. It makes the somewhat tedious process of making meshes to cut out shapes from your objects 
a lot more intuitive and artist friendly by allowing you to draw them directly in the viewport. There are a lot of options here and it's buttery smooth from drawing complex shapes with bevels to insetting the mesh or even creating new boxes from scratch. You can also use all kinds of meshes as a source for slicing and dicing, so you're definitely not limited to cutting just boxes. The add-on Fluent also has some of these features and includes a snapping grid for precision, so maybe check that out if you want an alternative. Number three is Smart Fill. F2 is a classic Blender add-on that's been around forever, and it makes the F hotkey a bit smarter by knowing which faces you are intending to fill and jumping right to them when you only have an edge or a couple vertices selected. Well, Smart Fill is like F2, but on steroids. It's pretty simple. It just adds things like grid fill and bridge edge loops to the mix when you need them. But since these actions are so common, having access to all of them by simply hitting the F key is a fantastic time saver. Number two on my list is HardOps. Probably the most well-known Blender add-on to date, HardOps saves you clicks by combining common combinations of modeling tasks into simple operations. If you find yourself marking edges as sharp, adjusting modifiers, or kit bashing with booleans pretty often, this add-on will feel like it was built just for you. As the name implies, it was developed with hard surface modeling in mind. But because things like arrays, mirroring, and setting custom normals are useful for most projects, it's great to have on all the time. If you like the idea of hard ops but are looking for something a little different, try Speedflow for modifiers and non-destructive workflows, and Ice Tools Pro or Fluent for more Boolean and hard surface detailing goodness. And finally, my number one modeling add-on for Blender 2.8 is Mesh Machine. Subtitled The Missing Essentials, Mesh Machine adds a lot of functionality that just isn't in Blender, and it's a crucial time saver for anyone who's doing serious modeling work. The big feature that really got me into it in the first place is it takes the really destructive process of edit mode bevels and makes them fully editable after the fact. But besides the amazing bevel operations, Mesh Machine also fixes geometry and normals on notoriously challenging areas such as curved surfaces, awkward angles, or faces surrounding booleans. There's also a new feature called Plugs, which lets you insert really cool mesh details without the mess of geometry and weird normals that usually come with boolean operations. So if you do any sort of hard surface modeling or modeling for games, Mesh Machine is a must have. Well, did I miss any of your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. And since a lot of you guys have been asking recently, I can confirm that the new version of Retopo Flow for 2.8, which you might have thought would be on this list, but it's not quite ready yet. And that's because the main developer, John Denning, is about neck deep in the new drawing code for 2.8, and it's quite a rewrite. That means the new version of Retopo Flow is going to be a lot faster, more responsive, and most importantly, really good looking. So anyway, I hope you found some new add-ons here that will be super useful going forward and will save you a lot of time. Cold hard truth though is that while add-ons can make you a faster modeler, they're not really going to make you a better modeler. For that, there's no way around it, you do have to learn the fundamentals of topology. And thankfully it's not that hard, you just need to know what to look for. So head over to cgcookie.com and take the mesh modeling bootcamp, and that will teach you all the things that aren't often taught online that are the essentials. But if you're just looking to get your feet wet in Blender 2.8 and just kind of get started with the software itself, check out our two new beginner courses. There's one about making a rocket and one about making a treasure chest. Take the rocket one first and then the treasure chest and that'll teach you all of the workflow stuff that you need right from the very beginning, even if you've never touched Blender before. So go ahead and check that out and thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe on other people's phones and laptops anytime they leave them unattended. See you next time. By combining common modeling by combining common combination. Can't feel those man. I feel like I'm really sweaty. <laughs> it's so warm. Jonathan out. See you next time. See you next time. See you next time. <laughs>